Hey, welcome back once again, CISSP wannabes. I'm Colin Weaver. I'm from IT Dojo, and these are the CISSP, no, wait, the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day, where seemingly every couple of days, I come at you with two questions to help you as you're doing your studies for the CISSP exam. Having said that, let's do those two questions. Question number one, coming at you today in the world of RAID, a redundant array of independent disks, Although there's many a book out there who say it's a redundant array of inexpensive disks, which one do you think it's supposed to be? Tell me in the comments down below. Um, I know which one I usually th say it is. But my question to you is, is of these choices that I'm going to present to you over here, which of them is going to give you the smallest net usable disk space? Click on pause if you need to. Pick the right answer. When you're ready, click play. All right, we are looking for the smallest amount of net usable space. RAID 0 is going to give you the largest amount of net usable space because RAID 0 offers no redundancy whatsoever. So aside from the file system itself, you get the full capacity of the disk and its storage capability. So that's not what we're looking for. RAID 1, that's a mirror. You lose half your disk space when you use RAID 1. 50% of it gone. All right, let's look at the other. RAID 3, you lose 1 divided by X disk space. If you have three disks in a RAID 3 uh, volume, you would lose one of those disks. If you had 10 disks in a RAID 3 volume, you would lose one of those disks. Um, because in a RAID 3, RAID 3 is, if you don't know, RAID 3 is, is striping with parity, but all the parity is stored on one disk. Okay. Uh, I personally don't see RAID 3 really ever. Um, if you do, please tell me about it, because I'd like to learn more about exactly why you're seeing RAID 3 and I'm not. Next up, batter up on this says RAID 5. Uh, RAID 5 is also 1 divided by X in terms of the disk space that you lose. You need a minimum of three disks in order to do RAID 5. And when you are doing it, you are going to lose, using three disks, you will lose the net sum of one of those disks. If you were, do, again, doing eight disks in a RAID uh, 5 array, you would be losing the net sum of one of those eight disks. All right, so which one did we lose the most disk space on? Quite apparently, it was RAID 1. RAID 1 costs us 50% of our disk space, and uh, it can actually get worse than that. It can get a lot worse than that if you want to get into you know, RAID 50 or RAID 60 and other things like that. But um, we won't go there right now. All right, my next question for you today, straight up. What's a Hamming code for? There's your answer choices. Click pause. Think about it. If you know the answer, pick it. Click play. All right, is a Hamming code used for data transposition and encryption processes? No, that's some junk I made up, even though it's actually real, but I made it up just for, as a distractor in this answer question. All right, is it a data encoding mechanism for 802.11 wireless LANs? No, also some junk that I made up. All right, how about it being used to detect and correct errors in data? Yup, uh, specifically in things like RAID, um, it's used uh, to go in and add parity data to your data so that you can detect whether or not your data has an error in it, where the error is, and actually make a correction for it. Hamming code is like crazy cool. Um, if you want to know more about it, which you don't really need to get into the gory details of for the CISSP exam, so if that caused you to just tune out, then that's cool. But if you think that geek stuff is cool, there's some videos down below that go in and talk about Hamming code. Very cool stuff. Uh, so check it out if you want to dig into it a little bit more. And then the final thing that I put in here was, hey, it's uh, used to calculate CRC checksums and Ethernet frames. Also, just some junk I made up. So uh, that is not what Hamming code is either. All right, today was easy. Two quick questions. Hope you dug them. Hope you're getting value from this. And I hope that what I do is helping you in some way, shape, or form get some questions right when you go and take the CISSP exam. Um, if you like these questions, please love on that like button. Um, if you want to get these questions on a regular basis, please click on the subscribe button. And I will dig it and appreciate it and be thankful to you. So I'll see you next time. Bye.